Thank you. My name is Masudur Rashid, Junior Research Consultant of Satrapsit Projects. Today, I'm going to present the introduction to towards seismic resilience. So the title of this book is Towards Seismic Resilience in Dhaka City. And the keyword is seismic resilience. A few questions may arise after seeing the title. One probable question is, what is seismic resilience? And another question might be, why seismic resilience required for Dhaka City? So first, what is urban seismic resilience? Urban seismic resilience is a very complex idea. It has many interconnected issues like social aspect, economical aspect, physical aspects, emergency response, and rescue situation, etc. So in simplified way, we can define urban seismic resilience as to withstand the adversity of an earthquake and efficiently reduce the associated risk. So this is a simplified diagram. We are trying to illustrate how to obtain urban resilience against seismic hazard. First, we need to identify the risk or assess the vulnerability of the area. Second, we need to, to take preventive measures to mitigate the risk. Third, community participation is very much required since the frequency of earthquake in Bangladesh is very low. And finally, the government intervention to execute the complex job in an efficient way. So why is seismic resilience required for Dhaka city? Well, the geographical location of Bangladesh is very crucial. It sits at the junction of three active tectonic plates in the north. We have the Eurasian plate in the west. We have Indian plate and in the eastern part, we have the Burmese micro plate. And Dhaka is surrounded by three different faults, the Modupur fault, Dauki fault, and the plate boundary fault. As a result, geographically, Dhaka is very vulnerable to seismic hazard. So second is the unplanned city. Dhaka is an unplanned city in every aspect that makes the capital vulnerable for seismic hazard. Construction of non-engineered buildings is a very common practice, not only in Dhaka, but also across the country. Low frequency of earthquake is another reason which indirectly putting us in a comfortable position that is dangerous. It causes lack of awareness among the citizen and decision makers as well. Altogether, the city itself is a very important and it is under silent threat. So to understand the city, it is very important to know the city very well. To know the development history is one of the criteria. And in this study, we have considered it, uh, the following aspect, like the historical development of Dhaka city, development characteristics and growth pattern of Dhaka city, population and density of Dhaka city. So the origin of Dhaka can be traced back to 1200 century. For this study, we divided the historical development of Dhaka into five different periods. Number one, the pre mughal period. During this period, the settlements were first established based on small commercial activities, which is known as bazaar. But in the Mughal period, Mughal were the first who truly understand the potentiality of this area as a great center of commercial space because of its accessibility, um, because of the accessibility of the connecting water routes around and circled by the Dhaka city. And during this period, the accessibility was much widened and Bangla, uh, Dhaka was declared as the capital of Bengal. So during the British period, the British Raj concentration, basically they have given the concentration to Nodia Mushidabad and the capital of Dhaka city shifted to the West, West Bengal. And during this period, though British have established some rail tracks and uh, extended the accessibility, however, the commercial activities continued, but in a slower pace. During the Pakistan period, the expansion was much greater uh, and the city moves towards the north. And again, it became the capital of East Pakistan and became the central commercial hub for this area. And during the Bangladesh period, the expansion further extended towards the north 
and it continues the growth. And for obvious reason, it remains the capital of independent Bangladesh. And it is the center of all economic activities, education, health, culture, and administrative, etc. So to understand the development characteristics and growth pattern, we have done normalized different water index and vegetation index to figure out how the city was developed last 30 years. We used Lancet 7 imagery and focused and found that a large portion of water bodies, wetlands and low-lying areas turned into developable land. In 1989, the eastern part and the northwestern part uh, which was uh, basically water bodies, retention pond, low-lying area turned into developable lands. As you can see, the greener space is a vegetation, but this is not trees or shrubs or high, uh, tall uh, vegetation. These are only the grass. So these are the sand-filled area in the yellow shaded areas, and they turned into developable lands. From the chart, we can see uh, the land use land cover changes over the last 30 years, and we can easily identify that 46.64% water bodies turned into vegetation and 30.93% water bodies turned into build up areas. So as mentioned earlier, Dhaka was developed based on commercial activities. If we look at the CBD area of Dhaka city, we can encircle the a whole built up area within 25 meter buffer scale. So if you consider the major uh, uh, commercial areas in uh, Dhaka city, the whole built up area can be encircled within this situation. And uh, alongside, if we look at uh, the road network pattern of Dhaka city from the detail area plan, then it is clearly indicates that the city is extended toward the east. So we have prepared a density map based on the Rajuk detail area plan. And we found that the city is almost 304 square kilometer and density of Dhaka is almost 43,000 per square kilometer. And the old town in the Dhaka South City Corporation was the is the most crowded areas in Dhaka city. So what did we find? We find that very Dhaka has a very high population and developments are rapid and unplanned. Wetlands and water bodies are turned into developable lands, development trends going towards east part of Dhaka, and seismic risk of Dhaka is very high. So what do we need to do? We need to know the ground condition of Dhaka city and which part are more vulnerable in terms of seismic hazard. We need to know the condition of structures and their seismic performance. We need to identify the most vulnerable structures and find appropriate solutions. We need to assess the emergency response and rescue, as well as its difficulties and challenges must be addressed. We need to raise public awareness level, and we need to review and update existing acts, rules, policies to mainstream the earthquake threats. So what we did, we divided the city into three different levels, the city scale, ward level, and individual building level. In city level, we tried to identify the seismic performance of building. We assess the emergency response and rescue situation. In ward level, we assess the open space, accessibility, and building collapse risks. And to some extent, the ground motion. This is a joint collaboration of working group two. And for building, individual building, we try to develop a prioritization method to identify and rank the most preferable buildings to develop the seismic performance by using retrofitting technique of the building. So we try to develop uh, the awareness among uh, the community as well as the stakeholder involvements like the general public, professionals and academicians like this seminar. We are expecting and discuss uh, for your uh, wise feedback from this seminar. So this is the deliverable of working group four. This is uh, the cover page of uh, the draft book. And on the right-hand side, this is the organization of the chapters. So we are now in chapter one and we have seven more chapters to be discussed in the following session. So I really thankful to all of you uh, to participate this seminar and thank you for your patience.